Thank you for following along to the origins of mankind. The breadcrumbs metaphor for this chapter is to illustrate two clues. One, that someone wants to be found, such as with Hansel and Gretel dropping their breadcrumbs, they wanted to be found. And two, are those breadcrumbs stale or fresh, meaning how long ago were the breadcrumbs dropped? Correctly dating something is very important. And what I'm getting at with this breadcrumbs chapter is that whatever civilization that built Giza and Saxa, Hamon and Baalbek and so many other impossible stone sites around the world, they didn't leave any breadcrumbs because, for some reason, they didn't want to be followed. They didn't and still don't want to be found. No breadcrumbs left behind, but certainly something was left behind. Today, we can carbon date organic material. Any small amount of rope, bone, teeth, wood, or even charcoal from a fire pit. And that is why we must now dig in again, and deeper, with a new approach. Not to find tombs and treasure, but instead to find truth and timelines. We all know that we're still not going to find a huge lathe for turning stone columns, or a monstrous hover deck for lifting 1,000 ton blocks, or a sonic stone softener, or a sonic clamp. Yeah, no. They obviously existed a long, long time ago, but they weren't left behind for us to find. We will never find an actual ancient high-tech tool, but we should be able to find some small item that is carbon datable, a piece of rope or an old fire pit. This is how Gobekli Tepe has been dated to 12,000 years ago. A fire pit and rope. I am one of a growing number of people, obviously, who believe that a lot of ancient locations were hastily buried thousands of years ago so that they wouldn't be easily found. Unfortunately, these megalithic sites were uncovered and the diggers were thieves and plunderers and didn't care at all about charcoal and rope and wood handles and the carbon datable items that they found. Those invaluable clues were tossed aside. The plunderers of long ago were looking for gold and gems, not truth and timelines. I hope to live long enough to see just one corner of any of the Giza pyramids carefully dismantled. I do believe that 20 years from now it will happen, and then we will finally learn how the pyramids were actually built, and we will find something that is carbon datable. And this will prove that the pyramids were built more than 12,000 years ago, possibly 14 or 15,000 years ago. The pyramids sat there, undisturbed, for at least 7,000 years before the Egyptians came along and a pharaoh claimed that his people built them, for him, of course. Same goes for Saxa Wayman. There is a wooden handle to be uncovered right about there, which will be carbon dated to more than 12,000 years old. In Baalbek, let's get under these stones and find a clue that hasn't seen the light of day since the very beginning. How old do you think that piece of charcoal is? And when we find out that these ancient sites are actually more than 12,000 years old, then we still won't know how they were done or even who. But we will have the 12,000-year-old proof that the Egyptians and the Romans and the Incas didn't do it. And we can then get serious about figuring out the lost technology. So here's a scenario that we need to give some very, very deep thought to. How would the world have responded in 1905 if National Geographic had published photos showing lemurs casting bronze hammers, nails, and bronze spearheads? And every month National Geographic published another article about how the special troop of lemurs was fighting back against the much larger FUSA with their bronze weapons. Page after page of photos. They were also cutting down the trees and planting crops and building small huts with thatched roofs. They had developed a language, and clearly these amazing little lemurs were by all accounts only about 4,000 years behind our own human development. Month after month, the world reads the articles and enjoys the photos as this impressive little primate makes its own little world into a much better place to live. And we all fall in love with these amazing little lemurs. After all, they are primates just like us. But then we see the National Geographic Monthly showing these lemurs not only defending themselves from the FUSA, but also waging war on other lemur troops. And it's clear that their creative skills 
are equally matched by a destructive nature against their own species. And they're dangerous little buggers too. Quick, efficient, and lethal. What would we do? It's 1905, and Madagascar is a big, unimportant island on the other side of the world. Would Teddy Roosevelt have sent the U.S. Navy and an Army platoon to wipe them out? Or would we try to communicate with them and let them learn about us, and thus we'd learn about them, maybe do business and trade with them? Or would the international community work together and vacate the island completely? to let the little buggers continue in their independent natural evolution. Think about that one for a moment. What would we humans do if we found another primate evolving, another primate that's only 4,000 years behind us? At that time, the early 1900s, there were only about 60,000 people living in Madagascar. Would we have been able to evacuate and literally quarantine the island? Would we be able to erase every sign of our former buildings, lighthouses and piers, thus allowing them to develop on their own without any knowledge of us? I definitely don't think that we would wipe them out. And I don't think that we'd want to start trading with them either. Nah, I think that we would simply vacate and establish an island sanctuary. The next question would be, though, would we leave a map room for them to find us? Some kind of pictogram that states symbolically that there's a big island to the west and we're waiting for them? No. We wouldn't do that either. Simply, we would leave nothing behind. No breadcrumbs at all. But at what point would we try to communicate with them? What test do these lemurs have to pass before we'll say, okay, you little guys are cool and smart and peaceful, and now we do want to work and trade with you? Would that be when they're at war with each other, destroying their own island and wasting their own natural resources? Or... Would it be when they have actually managed to conquer the waves of Madagascar and have sailed their little ships peacefully to Africa? I think you see where I'm going with this. We would watch and wait. What's more, we would also wait until they have managed to establish themselves and have dealt with the new dangers of Africa, the larger beasts, and the bigger bugs. That is when we would suddenly show up and say, Nicely done, you little buggers. Nicely done. You have arrived and survived on your own. Let's talk. The same goes for us humans here in the 21st century. We have to find our way peacefully off this rock entirely on our own. When we get to another planet and we settle in completely, we will then find out who used to live on Earth with us 13,000 years ago. Chapter 7 Are we alone in the universe? The chances of winning the Mega Millions Lottery are 305 million to 1, and there have been 200 jackpot payouts. And yet, 20 times in the last 20 years, the same winning numbers have been shared by two or more ticket holders. Two or more. With those odds, think about that for a moment. Even though the odds are 305 million to one, there's a 10% chance that the winner will have to split the winnings with someone else. So, with the number of solar systems out there actually being considered as limitless, do you think that this beautiful planet is the only one that has spawned intelligent life? It's a matter of odds, really. And Earth is not the only winner out there. Even at the most remote locations of our world, each and every creature is aware that there is much, much, much more out there. Yes, I said that three times for effect. When a clownfish at the edge of the reef looks out into the vast emptiness of the deep, he knows that there are other fish out there that he has never even imagined. There are other creatures stranger and more incredible that he can possibly believe. Why should we feel any different as we gaze upon the stars? Six in ten Americans believe that there is intelligent life on other planets and that they have visited Earth. Ipsos Online Poll 2020 I, for one, obviously agree with that poll, but I think it's much more like 70 to 75%. Yes, 75%. And I think that number goes much higher in other countries like Japan and France. 
Conduct your own three question poll. Ask around. First, do you think that we are alone? And two, if no, then how many types of ascendants or aliens do you think exist? And three, lastly, why do you think they haven't tried to communicate with us yet? Hmm. When I decided to make this chapter in this small booklet, I thought that it was going to be a much longer chapter, but it doesn't have to be. It's really pretty simple. Of course, we're not alone in the universe. Thank you for following along to the origins of mankind. Our eyes are now being opened to the logical story of what happened and why here on Earth only 13,000 years ago. Please enjoy my next chapter. Thank you.